Back in 2015, I installed a Henkaku hack on my Vita. I kept that hacked Vita and didn't use it much because I was worried about being banned from PSN if I log into it. A few months ago, I decided to start exploring what was possible with a hacked Vita, and I found the possibilities were amazing. Now, this video is not a guide how to hack your Vita. There's plenty of resources for that, although I do recommend going to Reddit Vita Hacks and checking out videos by the YouTuber Tech James. I found their guide super helpful. What I wanted to talk about is the reasons I'm so glad I hacked my Vita. Firstly, and most obviously, emulation. With a hacked Vita, you can emulate pretty much every retro console up to the N64. You can emulate N64 games, but the quality isn't great, not all games work, and some only work with no sound. Systems up to the N64, and of course the PSP and PS1, work brilliantly. I have RetroArch installed on my Vita, so I can play NES, SNES, Mega Drive, GBA, and games from many more systems all on my Vita. I don't agree with pirating current games, but emulating old games that aren't available to buy, I think is fine. Or emulating games you've already bought that aren't available on PSN for Vita, I again think is okay. I'm sure many people that hack a device like a Vita are doing so to emulate games, and given how comfortable the Vita is to hold and the feel of the controls, I think it's the best system for playing retro games. My hacked Vita is full of MAME arcade games and PSP games. I love that I can play Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and Crisis Core on my Vita now. Another feature that I love is that you can take screenshots of any game. That may not sound like a big deal, but I'm a big fan of taking screenshots, and some Vita games didn't allow them. I don't know why Vita games would restrict taking screenshots. You also couldn't take screenshots of PSP and PS1 games, but with a hacked Vita, you can take screenshots of everything. With a hacked Vita, you can overclock the system to speed up gameplay and make games run better. For a game like Borderlands 2, you have a much better experience and the game runs far smoother. I did admittedly find my Vita crashed occasionally when I turned overclock on. Not in the game, but on the home menu, weirdly. I'm not sure why, so I disable it when I don't need it for a game. Other than the occasional crashes, it's a cool feature to improve the gameplay of some games. One of the biggest complaints of the Vita is the proprietary memory card. By hacking a Vita, you can use SD cards. It's a huge deal to expand storage by 100 gigs, and I recommend that as one of the first things you do when you hack your Vita. Funnily enough, I'm not using anywhere near that, but it's still nice to have the extra space. One feature that's not really that big a deal, but I like it anyway, is that you can add a custom splash screen, like having my channel logo when the Vita starts up. Another feature I really appreciate is being able to transfer files via USB using regular Explorer folders. I never liked going through Content Manager to transfer files. It was always a pain. Being able to use regular folders is just so much easier. Finally, translated games. There are so many Vita games released in Japan that we didn't get in the West. And thanks to some very talented people, you can download and install translation patches. I can finally play and understand Dragon Quest Heroes 2, I Am Setsuna, and Chaos Rings 3. The last time I checked, there wasn't an available translation patch for Catherine or Zanki Zero but hopefully that'll come over time. I played Dragon Quest Heroes 2 in Japanese, and I love the gameplay. I'm planning to replay it again, so that I can actually understand what's going on in the story. This is one of my favorite features with hacking my Vita. There are other hacks, plugins, and features, but I haven't installed them all yet. The potential is massive with a hacked Vita compared to a non-hacked one, and it makes this already incredible device even better. Now, there are risks with hacking your Vita, and I recommend following a tried and tested guide when you do do it. But the benefits are awesome. We're getting less Vita game releases now, and this just increases the longevity of the Vita as a device to be used in the future. I keep seeing so many retro emulation consoles being released, and while a second-hand Vita costs more than a lot of these devices, it can also do so, so much more when it's hacked. So guys, are you planning to hack your Vita? And if you've hacked it, what are your favorite features? Leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.